We just had to do Corvo again because we're so nostalgic about the character. First of all, we really wanted to see what Corvo felt like with a voice. Every year, I think the anniversary of Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. In Dishonored 2, it's 15 years after the Rat Plague, after the first game, and Corvo is wondering, how long can I protect my daughter? He's seen a lot, he's still facing these crazy threats to the throne and to the Empire. And so, Corvo is like a man reflecting on the winter of his life. He's both the, the badass supernatural assassin we wanted him to be, and he's very thoughtful. And of course, Corvo is a foreigner. That's part of his character. He's originally from Sirkonos. At the start of Dishonored 2, he's on the run from Dunwall Tower. This time he's going down into his native country. He's seeing Sirkonos again for the first time in a long time. He's seeing how it's changed under the Duke of Sirkonos. And so it's a land that's familiar to him and unfamiliar at the same time. Corvo comes back with all his powers and what we wanted to do is not only put them in the new engine, but also find interesting tweaks or improvement to them. It's interesting to look at Corvo's powers. He was a guy who was marked by the outsider during the Rat Plague when half the city was dead by plague. And so he has Devouring Swarm. You can now upgrade it so that you have two swarms of rats and larger swarms of rats. You can have a swarm that follows you around Pied Piper style. And those are just some of the upgrades under Devouring Swarm. He's also a foreigner. He's from a different place and he never quite fit in in Dunwall. And so he has the power of possession where he can literally embody someone else and walk around in their skin. We loved possession. It's this ability that allows you to, to physically enter a character or an animal at first and exit somewhere else. So you actually use the character or the animal as a vessel to move through the world. And we added some upgrades that allow you, for instance, to chain hosts. Another cool kind of weird upgrade is that you're now allowed to possess corpses if you choose this upgrade. Suddenly it's not about movement, it's about creating hiding spots for yourself. Each time you knock someone down or you kill him, it becomes a hiding place. What the? One of Corvo's classic powers that fans absolutely love because it's so crazy over the top is bend time. Initially, he has the ability to slow time and then he can upgrade it so he can stop time altogether. This time we also allow you to spool time forward a little bit pressing a button or pulling a trigger, you can allow it to advance a little bit until things get exactly into the position that you want. It's very powerful. One of Corvo's signature powers from the first game is Blink. It's sort of a short-range teleport. When we were working on the DLC for Dishonored 1, we gave Doubt a, a kind of a redirective Blink that allows you to move out into space, stop time, rotate and continue your blink back in the direction you came or in another direction. And so we knew that's one upgrade we wanted to add to Corvo for, for blink in the new game. And it really does allow players to explore their environment. It's not only about expanding the powers, but expanding them in a way that is, is fun, that allows for that kind of creative play. Plus the new system for the supernatural powers where we give upgrades for all of them and allow the player to go deeper on those. And, explore those mechanics and how they interact with stealth and combat situations. Players are really going to be torn. The new thing with Emily or the nostalgic thing with Corvo. Right now, if you asked me to choose between the two, I would be hard pressed because I love them both. Like the, It's like choosing between your children.